Amen. Let's turn our Bible quickly to the book of Second Peter's. Second Peter's chapter two. No, chapter one. Second Peter one. Thank you, Father God. Second Peter one. I'm going to read verse one to four, and after that, I'm going to read Hosea. But I need to make some comparisons, you see. Maybe I should read Hosea first. You know, that's the Old Testament. Then we can come down to the New. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Just one verse. Hosea 4 verse 6. Hosea 4 verse 6. Hallelujah. H-O-S-E-A. Hosea 4 verse 6. I can't see it. That was my screen. Okay, that's all right. No problem. Okay, that's fine. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Hmm. Let's see. Second Peter. One, I'll read for one to four. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge, the knowledge, the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge, again, the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding and great and precious promises that, that, that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped, not will escape, you have already escaped. You have to think like a free man. You have already escaped. Oftentimes we are still thinking like we are bound. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. In other words, there's nothing the world can bring before you now that should entice you enough to deny your God. There isn't. Blessed be the reading of God's word. Thank you, Father God. I want to speak with us on this subject. Living in the knowledge of truth. Living in the knowledge of truth. Heavenly Father, bless your word, bless your people. Let your, come, let your word come, O oh God, unhindered. I declare revelations, I declare power. I declare victory in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you because the devil is already bound already. We bless your name, O oh God, we give you all the glory. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Quickly, I, I commence from the book of Hosea. Hosea 4, verse 6. Now, uh, let me throw a bit of light into that as I use that as my backdrop to walk my way into, the, into our test. Now, uh, Hosea deals with impending judgments of God as it relates to Israel. Praise God. More, you know, more in the negative aspect. He was quite negative in his... Uh, disposition or you know in his writing Hosea is you know is tasked with the with dealing with Israel in their apostasy and in their anti-God character glory to God which was a bit of a challenge because in the in the theocracy where God rules the theocracy simply means where God rules are we together now God must be obeyed to enable bring his blessings on his children now, considering the issues that was at hand at the time, Hosea assess, oh, Hosea's assessment and viewpoint based on God's you know, inspiration. So when you consider this verse of scripture, it seems as if you know, uh, that was quite harsh. In other words, if you don't serve me, I will bring the curse upon your children. Because it suggests that God's attitude is you know, towards the, the, the children of Israel, it suggests as though uh, because your fathers treat me like this, or because your parents treat, treat me like that, I will also treat your children in that manner. 
But when you understand the consequential behavior, then we have to agree that if the children are not properly raised by their parent, then obviously there's going to be an issue down the line. If the children are not properly introduced to God, to their God, to be able to understand that in this world that you live in, you know, uh, there's something above the realm that you can see. If they are not taught that, if they are not introduced to God, to be able to understand that, you know, uh, principle, then they are open up to a, a challenge as they begin to grow. Oh, thank you, Father God, which will then open the open open which will open then you know them into judgment themselves, uh, because every act of disobedience opens room for consequences. Praise God. This is why we must do everything we can and be intentional about it, making sure that our children are impacted by God's knowledge or with God's integrity, with God's uh, honesty, and then with God's truth and God's factor. Because we have the power in our hands to see, to see it that our children don't repeat our errors. We have the power to be able to see that our children don't repeat our errors. Praise God. Now, if you consider the times that we're in now, you're going to realize that uh, you know, the, 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 ret the, the retribution of the parents is hanging on the children. When you look at you know, what is going on at the moment, which is totally against God's divine order. Are we together here? These days, you know, we now have younger parents we have younger grandparents. These days, you see a lady of 35, 40 years, she's a grandmother already. Praise God. These days, you know, things have changed. Glory to God. Uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, the, the younger they are, the less experienced they are. And then the, you know, the question now is, how can a child father a child? Uh, how can a, you know a little child you know be able to guide that other child correctly? So which means uh, so Hosea's was point was that you know because you have for, because you have refused to follow the dictates of God, leading your child or your children in the right path of God, then they're going to end up giving you trouble when you are you know supposed to be resting and enjoying the hard work of your labor. So the consequence the book of Hosea is talking about is not uh, a pronounced judgment. No, praise God. Rather, it's the consequence of the bad attitude of parenthood. Are we together now? Now, a quick, that's a quick backdrop for us to be able to understand how we move into where we are going. Now, my message, of course, hinges on the book of Second Peter, uh, verse 1 and uh, 1 to 4. My message, my message today is not for who is not for those who want to uh, remain on the wrong way. People who just want to sit on the wrong way and do nothing. My message is not for those who have just resigned to what life has thrown at you. My message is not for those who just want to, you know, sit down or sit back in the comfort of the barriers that men have set for you. My message is not for those who are not ready to move. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. Please, you must understand that none of us ever move from where we are now to the next dimension or the next level of our lives without a battle. For you to move from where you are right now, to be able to now move into the next dimension of your life, be ready to fight. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. Uh, a quick uh, extract from one of my writers, you know, Jogan Mortiman. Jogan Mortiman is a German writer. He's actually a German scholar. He writes, and I quote, The theologians is not concerned mainly to supply a different interpretation of the world, of history, and of human nature. Rather, but his concern is to transform them in expectations of divine transformation, unquote. In other words, it is critical that I have to move into the knowledge of truth. Let me teach and then we can holler later, praise God. Why? Because uh, truth has promised a different future. Are we together now? You must understand, as long as you are living outside the knowledge of truth, 
<laughs> your future can never be certain because you are holding on to something that is not going to yield anything praise god if i have relationship based on lies or based on false information it means i have not ordered my steps based on the knowledge of god uh, consequently then i have no con i have no control over my future and my destiny because i am moving with a lie I will together now because I can only be vulnerable in someone else's hand if I am not equipped with fact, if I'm not equipped with truth. Glory to God. Knowledge then is my pathway to safety. Knowledge is my pathway to safety. Knowledge brings truth. Truth then determines where I go and how I go from where I am to be able to attain or to walk into my future. Are we together here? Why is this important, ladies and gentlemen? It is important why? Because I have been developed in a negative environment and controlled by negative forces. The major issue you are dealing with today is not the issue in your hands. The issue you are dealing with today is trying to get rid of the lies that have been you know implanted into your mind oh god father help me thank you jesus now i need an impartation of the positive to enable change the directions of my life uh, thank you holy spirit oftentimes we think that the course of our lives is changed at the point of change no 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 that's not correct uh, the direction of our lives ladies and gentlemen has to be changed you know right from the beginning to enable arrive at the right destination oh thank you father god and that's the reason why it is important you take uh, diligence in who you listen to it is important you take diligence in who influences your mind oh it is critically important that you uh, you know who you submit your mind to that's the reason why you know our mandate is raising men and women to be biblically literate and logically sound because i've seen believers holy ghost field doing stupendous things making foolish choices and you know foolish decisions praise be the name of the almighty god there's a verse in the book of psalms he said god is angry with the foolish every day anytime you exhibit foolishness as a child of god god is not happy are we together here praise be the name of the almighty god uh, to the greek ladies and gentlemen they thought that god is a god of rhetoric uh -huh. he was a god of changing concept but he never changed or promotes change hmm. oftentimes we just take you know we oftentimes we just uh, talk you know we just talk about god you know just uh, speak about god and then we sing about about god uh, we relate you know we have you know, we have really we have relegated god or christianity yeah, to just talk uh -huh. you know oh he's more knowledgeable he knows more bible verses uh, he can quote bible verses while talking he can quote 100 bible verses you know and so we are really we are really getting all of that uh, you know to talk just talk uh, god now becomes uh, you know a changing conversation uh, or a changing denomination or a changing affiliation uh, we're together here uh, but when you deal with the revelations of jesus christ uh, he is not any form of, uh, of of epitome of an eternal present uh, no no uh, the reason is uh, the ne he necessitates that we have a view of revelations uh, of his apocalypse praise god uh, christ necessity that i do not look at myself right now based on where i am god expects me uh, you know to look at myself based on where i am going <laughs> praise be the name of the almighty god uh, and that's why if you're if you you going to build your life don't make decisions or choices based on where you are because you can make a permanent decisions based on where you are and then you shut yourself out from the future when the future comes are we together now now for that to happen ladies and gentlemen the truth of the future has to be manifested by promise uh, when you look at our test very carefully anytime God wants to move you from here there what he does is he gives you a promise. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. Uh, God gives you a 
promise. He promised me that I walk in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I should not walk in the knowledge of myself. I should not walk in the knowledge of people around me. I should not walk in the knowledge of my, of, of my environment. I should not walk in the knowledge of my challenges. But I should walk in the knowledge of myself. Praise God. If I understand, you know, this land, you know, if I can understand who I am in God, if I can understand who I am, if I can understand who God is in my life, that understanding alone will change my future. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. I'm laying a ground for us to be able to fly. Please follow me carefully. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Because I'm not operating within what people have actually dictated for me. No. But I'm operating in my purpose and in my calling according to the knowledge that I now have have of my God. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. Oftentimes, the reason why we react so much to our environment is because we are yet to really understand whom God is. Thank you, Father. Father, thank you, God. You see, sometimes God will hide you in what you consider to be inconvenience. Mm. He hides you there because He said, Well, you have some people right now within your cliques. You have some people right now within your contact. If I expose you now, if I reveal you now, then they're going to kill your vision. But I'm going to keep you here. <laughs> Why they look at you and think about you that, oh, he's got problems, he's got issues. Forget about this one. He's building you, he's guiding your momentum. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. He hides you in that trouble. But to you, this is inconvenient. I need to get out of this. Uh, don't be quick to get out of God's plan. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. And you are, God hides you there. And by the time God is now revealing you, he has taken care of the issues that could bring you down. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. It is critically important that we understand if I am going to move into my future, uh, then I have to deal with my future from the point of what is possible. Uh, thank you, Father God. Uh, if I'm dealing with my, if I'm dealing with my future, it has to be from the point of positivity. Uh, it has to be from the point of what is possible. Uh, praise God. Uh, I see reality more than uh, just actuality. Uh, I see reality as possibility uh, as well as uh, actuality. Praise God. Uh, actuality. It's not, it's not all that it, that it is when it comes to reality. Why? Because the reality of, 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 the, of the matter is I will not be here tomorrow. I know that I'm here today, but tomorrow I'm not going to be here. Why? Because I am moving in the knowledge of God and he is going to take me and change my direction. Praise be the name of the almighty God. Which means all I need, ladies and gentlemen, is a directional change. I will together now a directional change to enable me encounter the power of God based on his word and his promises as he launches me into my destiny. Oh, thank you, Father God. Because if I keep going in this direction, my future will never come to pass. I will together here. But uh, if I but if I, but if I change my direction and focus on the positive aspect of my life, then I'll be able to negate the negative. I will move into the next dimension or into the next level of my life. Thank you, Father God. Now is where the battle is. This is where the battle is. The battle of the believer. Child of God, if you cannot win the battle in your mind, you can't celebrate victory. Are you listening to me now? If you cannot win the battle in your head, then victory becomes elusive. The devil is a liar. Now, this is the battlefield. The battlefield is the mind. But you see, the lie is what religion have taught you. Religion have taught you that. Gather some scriptures. Declare prayer and fasting. Go into war and all of that. You gather scriptures, quote scriptures, declare fasting, go to war, come back and you're like, you know, I think I need more three days, three days, three more days fasting. Praise God. The devil don't mind you fasting and praying and declaring war. I will together here. But how many of this battle, how many of this victory, how many of these scriptures actually is revealed in your spirit? Praise be the name of the almighty God. Oh, these are the lies of the enemies. Thank you, Father God. And that is the battleground. As long as I'm doing nothing, there is no need for struggle. 
as long as I'm not, as, as long as I'm moving with a bunch of people who are going nowhere. Uh, and these are the people that are influencing you. Then there's no need for struggle. Praise God. As long as I'm, I, I, I have no drive. I have no vision. I have no hunger for change. As long as I need, I, you know, I don't have any any drive to move me from where I am to where I want to be or to where God wants me to be. As long as I don't have that drive, there's no struggle. Praise God. As long as I, as long as I'm as I'm content, you know, at the level I don't want to deal with the pain of expectations, then I don't struggle. Praise God. There's no struggle. As long as I as as as, as I'm content in the midst of ignorant people. I have no struggle. You know, there are sometimes you keep some people that are very ignorant. They are in your life. They can't even give you any good counsel. They are the, they are the first people you call when you are dealing with an issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These are your environments. Your environment is not where you are right now. Your environment is your contact form. Your environment is in who you talk to when you are dealing with issues. And you talk to them, so it is well. And they will not share their own issues with you. They begin to romance your issues both ways and you know the other way and all of that. You know, at the end of the day, no solution. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Praise God. <laughs> oh, you know, permit me as I bring this as a, as analogy, you know, quickly. I consider with me for a moment, you know, uh, the British uh, Gloucester, the British Gloucester 28 verse 30, uh, 28 stroke 38. You know, uh, this is the one of the greatest aircraft ever contributed to uh, ev- uh, aviation history. I want together now. Uh, it's a plane. It's, it's lovely. It's a beautiful. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what's going on with my mic. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. Amen. Glory to God. Now, uh, consider with me, you know, for a moment, you know, the, uh, the British Gloucester E-28-38 is an, air, is, an, is an aircraft, one of the greatest ones that, you know, uh, has been contributed actually to aviation. Now, as long as the plane is sitting on the wrong way, there's no need for jets. There's no need for any power. As long as it's just there, you know, he has, he's got no plan, you know, to move. There's no need. But there are some dynamics here. The plane is stationed on the wrong way. You know, it's not, it's not going anywhere, but it's just stationed. I mean, the engine is not even on. It's just stationed. The wind is blowing. You can see the plane, you know, just, you know, uh, moving, you know, in that direction. Because it's not going anywhere, praise God. You know, it's just blowing. Uh, now, there are all kinds of noise going around. Other planes are just flying and they're taking up, but it's just there. It's not, you know, and all of that. You know, the engine is not on. There's no need for any jet propulsion. Glory to God. Because it's not going anywhere. There is no need for any motion because, uh, you know, there is no plan for the plane to move or to go anywhere. There's no need for jet propulsion because uh, it's not going against wind velocity. Are we together here? It's not fighting against gravity. Why? Because gravity suggests that we remain on the ground. Are we together now? Now, if you are going to defy gravity, then some element must come to play. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. For you to fly, you have to debase gravity. In other words, you have to eliminate gravity. Now, if I choose to fly, then I will need jet propulsion. Praise God. I will need jet propulsion to be able to fly. Now, you will have to you will have to get the, uh, the, the, the pushback tracker. There's a pushback tracker tractor that you have to plug to the plane, move the plane out of the hangar, bring it to the wrong way, then you are not preparing to fly. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Father God. It doesn't matter how much weight is in the plane as long as a plane is not going anywhere mm-hmm. but it matters how much how much weight you put in the plane when the plane have not decided to fly praise be the name of the almighty god child of god many times we want to fly without jet propulsion we want to fly without any struggle we want to fly without putting in any work we want to go you know forward without any struggle we want to make progress progress and advance the course of our lives without any commitment or without any kind of 
sacrificed. Uh, but for some, for, for, uh, for some you, uh, but for some of you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, who has who are vision carriers, you have vision on your inside, uh, and you have decided to give birth to your purpose. Uh, you must have come to the conclusion uh, that for you to be able to birth your vision or move from where you are to where you want to be, uh, you got to be ready to fight. Ready to fight. The lies that have been told over over the years in the you know in the uh, in in the religious circle you know uh, is is you know gather some scriptures, go to the mountain and pray. Yeah, you 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 take the scriptures, you choose whatever mountain that is higher that that is that is, that is the highest mountain in your environment. Then you climb the mountain, and then you are praying there, and you pray there, and then you come back, but there's no impact. And some you do that sometimes it has become a religious practice. You go out up on the mountain, you come back, but nothing is happening. And some will say to you, "Don't worry, Elijah prayed seven times on the mountain. Keep going. Seven times. Seven is, a, is, a, is a seven. The number seven is a is a is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a is a number of completion. Then you keep going in this circle of religion." Oh, thank you, Father God. There's nothing wrong with praying, you know, but it is totally, completely unfruitful if you have to pray without revelation. Praise be the name of the Lord. What has gone wrong with the church due to erroneous and false teaching is that we have sat on the wrong way expecting somebody, uh, somebody else to be able to move us. We have sat on the wrong way uh, expecting somebody else uh, to be able to make us fly, help us to fly. <laughs> there is what is known as the glider. Now the glider is another kind of aircraft, you know, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't require engine is that is is it called glider now this glider you know it depends on the external to be able to fly in other words when it, when when there's wind that wind is powerful enough to be able to assist it to fly praise god uh, that is a glider oftentimes that is the position that we take as believers you know because the glider depends on the external you know to, for, for assistance uh, but the jet proportion do not don't do that the jet proportion have got its own power it can decide to fly anytime he chooses to fly praise god because see, when you depend on the external you will not be able to give birth to your vision when you depend on the external you might not be able to give birth or get to your purpose are you listening to me now god have not designed you to seek help here and there god have designed you and he has equipped you with the power to be able to fly praise be the name of the almighty god but the moment you come to the conclusion that you know what i need help when god is saying at this stage of your life you don't need help every help you need is on your inside but the lack of believing that can keep your vision stagnant the devil is a liar thank you father god thank you jesus Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. The power, ladies and gentlemen, is the knowledge of what is taken, is, is the knowledge that is within your surroundings. The knowledge, the knowledge. Because God is tempting to build you and to increase you. That is God's plan. Uh, what God wants to do, uh, he wants to be able to build you, praise God, uh, both with everything you are dealing with, uh, to be able to use that to build your staying power, build your, stab build your, st your, your stability. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, uh, every level, every devil's, I'm dealing with, the devil I'm dealing with now is the devil of envy. Few people have known what's going on here. Envy has become the devil now that I'm fighting. I would rather fight an envious devil than fight a pity devil. Devil that will see you and be pitying you. Devil don't envy where there's no progress. Devil envies you where he said that you are, you are hitting your target and you are going well. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The same God that conquered the devil of pity will conquer the devil of, pity, of, 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 of envy. I would together now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So God, his primary objective is to build you. To build you. Satan is always wanting to destroy and to diminish your value. You can never move to a level of building and increasing without overcoming the negative element that is always trying to keep you down or trying to stop you from making progress. You got to 
keep you have to kill that enemy first. Uh, oftentimes, it's uh, it's as a it's as a result of how you have been fed over the time, based on how you have been fed over the years. Uh, you know, when you nearly came into church, what what were you taught? Uh, what principle was uh, you know was make, made available to you? <laughs> All of that to a certain extent have now formed a barrier in your psychosis. Uh, that's why the first thing Peter Peter did here in our test is that uh, you know the first thing he did he repudiated the for the false teachers uh, because false teachers uh, are always you know you know destructive in painting God wrongly for you false teachers they are very destructive they are destructive in the house of God they are destructive to the people of God people who always see the negative side of you they always see the they will, have you not seen have you seen some people I had a vision. I have this, I have that. The, what I said to one, I said, no, nah. I said, you see vision every day. Why can't you see vision of the business we can do and make us millionaires? The ones you see are the ones that is always making you to feel bad after you listen to it. What kind of vision is that? God wants to build, but the devil wants to bring you down. Now, what they see is what you can't become what you can't do, how you cannot achieve it, how it is impossible for you to become that. Matter of fact, some of you have some of them in your family. I have some, I have some of them in my family. When you tell them this is your vision, they hate you for it. How dare you better than my own child? How dare you trying to become better than my own, you know, to, you know and all of that. You know, that's why I always tell people, I don't know, I mean, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you are blessed with uncles and aunties. The greatest enemies of families are uncles and aunties. God have mercy. Praise God. <laughs> Uncles and aunties. The moment another child tells you to be better than theirs, you see envy. Uncles and aunties. They'll be nice when you're a baby. They'll bring you chocolate, look after you. But the moment you begin to now try to begin to walk into your vision, into your purpose, life becoming so good, you see uncle, I wonder, uncle, why, why, when, when did you change? He didn't change. Uncle has always been like that. He can deal with you as a little but I can't deal with your success. Many times, we have to, many times we have to free ourselves from the false city that we have been fed with right from the beginning of our time. You know, that false city, ladies and gentlemen, takes a strong hold on us. What the writer is saying here is that uh, it's more destructive than morality. That's what Peter is trying to ask, explain to us here. Because you know when something is wrong and you want to get rid of it. But when something has become part of you, to the degree that you don't even know that you have it. You know, sometimes you don't know you have low self-esteem until you are faced by a challenge. You don't know. It's just there. Sometimes you don't know how, you know, how, uh, uh, you know, how, how laid back you are until you are faced with, a ch with an opportunity and you can't take it. You can't. You don't know how, you don't know how, 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 how uh, you know, you don't, there's no self-pride, but you don't know. But until you are faced with something, it now exposes you to see that, oh, something is wrong with my, ins or with my inside. You don't even know that you can do, you can do more, you know, with yourself until when opportunities comes and you feel that I'm not good enough to take this. Whereas you are more than enough to be able to do it. Because all that you have heard over all your life is what you cannot do. What you cannot become, the limit you cannot go, you cannot go above. You have heard so much about that. You know you are not good enough to do this. You are not good enough to become that. What you cannot do, someone will tell you, "What can you do without me?" Someone will tell you, "If I'm not in your life, you are nothing." These are the, these are the things you have heard over time. If 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 it, if it wasn't me, you couldn't go to the next level. You need me to become whom you want, whom wherever you want to become. You need me to be there. These are, the, these are the negatives that you have heard over time. Your mind has been fed with so much negativity and falsehood to the point that it has become a part of you unconsciously. So what God has to do, first of all, is to wipe off this of this, this false this false information or this false mindset and then, imp and then implant into you the positivity of your future. God has to get rid of where your mind is first. And one thing that I find so difficult about believers is difficult to unlearn, to be able to learn. 
and until you unlearn, you can't learn nothing. Glory to God. From the theological point of view, false teachers cannot give you truth. False teachers cannot stimulate your faith. Uh, because false teachers are looking at using you for their next level. Mm. It is faith that come, it is faith that comments by hearing. And hearing by the word of the living God. When I hear from the strong, when I hear from the word of God, uh, you know, the, the strength of that word of God, faith is simulated on my inside. It is promise that makes faith possible. Are we together now? Without faith, without promise, faith is not possible. Praise God. Because the moment you the moment I receive a promise, glory to God, now I have expectation. Uh, uh, now I've received that promise. Uh, now I have expectation. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. Uh, if you look into God's word, uh, you will realize uh, it's all promise promise and promises. I want together now. What God is saying here is, uh, you know, what, what God is going to do is, is to give you a promise. I know you are looking for a miracle, but God is going to say, I'm going to give you a promise. Uh, you are looking for a magic. God says, no, 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 I'll give you a promise. Uh -huh. uh, God gives you a promise. Praise God. Now, it's all about promise, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on, the, uh, on this promise, uh, you know, God wants you to be able to take the promise and then walk with your promise. Because uh, that promise is Simulate faith on your inside. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. So that so that faith can be activated based on the promise of God which you have received. Now, you know, any word that is not of God cannot produce faith. If the word is not from God, it cannot produce faith. And without faith, God is not pleased. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. And without faith, it is impossible for you to please God. Which means, uh, doubters don't please God. Oh, God help me, Lord. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to. Doubters don't preach God. Uh, they don't please God. When you doubt God's ability, it doesn't please God. Uh, when you doubt your own ability, you don't please God. Uh, when you doubt the promises of, God, of, of God's word, you don't, bring, you, you don't please God. Uh, when you, you, don't, you don't please God in, in any way. God is pleased. When you expect something from him, he's pleased. When your expectation is on his promises, praise God. And that expectation, ladies and gentlemen, it comes to pass. Why? Because God is bound to his word. Which means, if you believe, you will fight for what you believe. If you believe, you will fight for it. If you believe, you fight for it. It is those who doubt who don't believe and they doubt God that quit and abort their promises. Anytime you abort God's promises in which you have received, there's a miracle. The miracle. And that God is not a liar, but you, that's what the Bible said. He said, he said, he said don't make God a liar. God is counting on you not to make him a liar. If I ask you right now, how many of you right now have a promise? Hmm, praise God. You genuinely have a promise. You, you're genuinely asking God, God, I believe in this promise. I'm, 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 I'm trusting you for this promise. I'm hanging on you for this. You genuinely have a promise. You, you know, we live in a time right now, we just leave, Sarah, Sarah, what will be, will be. No promise. If you, if you, if you have a promise, I can guarantee you, it's going to come to pass. Amen. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. I want to talk to some, some people right here, you know, who are ready to take off. You're on the wrong way. You, have, you, know, you, you are ready to take off. Your ability to have a promise and hold on to that promise is an indication that you trust God. It is a fact that I believe in this God. If you trust in God, and you hold on to that promises, uh, it shows that, you know, your heart and your faith is in God. Praise God. Uh, your faith is not on the external. Your faith is on the inside. Are we together now? Uh, you will not be able to, you know, bring the devil to shame if you hold no promises. Uh, praise be the name of the almighty God. Uh, let me ask your neighbor, do you have a promise? <laughs> 
if you have a promise, it's time to take off. It is time to take off. If you have a promise, it is time to take off. It is time to take off. Get away from the negativity. It is time to take off, ladies and gentlemen. Shed some weight. Praise be the name of the Lord. It is time to take off. Uh, Re-update your contact. I will together here. It is time to take off. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. You have been on this mountain for too long. It is time to take off. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, what faith? What faith is saying is uh, faith. Faith is it is a it is, is a drive that bring promises to life. Thank you, Jesus. When we please God, things begin to move in our lives. Thank you, Father God. Let me see quickly as I begin to come to a close shortly. Let me show the scripture in Galatians. Galatians chapter five, verse four. Galatians five, verse four. He said, Christ is become of no effect unto you. <laughs> Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are falling from grace. If you are still hanging on to uncertainties, to lies, to falsehood, say so you are falling from grace. That doesn't mean that Christ is not effective. He is effective. Uh, because you have chosen to believe a lie, it has now made Christ to become ineffective in your life. If you are fed with false and for false, the world then is of no effect, effect in your life. If you are fed with lies, the word of God is of no effect. Child of God, it is not of God for you to be, uh, for you to feel that you can't make it. Mm. Anytime you feel that you can't make it, that is not God. Uh, praise God. Uh, it is not of God for you to feel that you are not an overcomer. <laughs> it is not of God for you to feel, you know, condemned and deplorable. It is not of God for you to feel unqualified. Are you listening to me? <laughs> It is not of God for you to exercise any form of disqualification at all. That is not from that. That is not of God. Uh, I, the Bible says, "I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me." I can do all things. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. I can do all things. God is saying, "I made you to control and to dominate your environment." Praise be the name of the Almighty God. That is why. That is why you are having all kinds of fight. Why? because they don't want to leave you, you know, or you don't want to detach yourself to be able to move to the next dimension of your life. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. Uh, they just want to keep you and keep feeding you with what they want, not what you want. Feed you with what they want uh, until you become a junk. The devil is a liar. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. I've come to let you understand, when you make up your mind to break out, you will break out. You will break out. There's no jail that is jailed enough to hold you bound when you are moving with a promise. Oh, shut up. There isn't. But I believe God that somebody here is breaking out in the name of Jesus. Uh, thank you, Father God. Because you are head, you are not tail. In the name of Jesus. You are more than a conqueror. In Jesus' mighty name. You are created to win. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are far from oppression. In Jesus' mighty name. You are created for glory. Far from shame. Far from defeat. In Jesus' mighty name. So what Peter did in chapter 2 is that he addressed the sensuous lifestyle. The sensuous lifestyle simply means, uh, you know, the worldly lifestyle. Praise God. The worldly lifestyle. And then deals with the skepticism, uh, you know, whether Christ will return or not. I will together here. Uh, the, the greatest lie the devil will tell you is that uh, don't believe the word of God. Uh, here now, Peter opens up uh, the greatest discussion and then, you know, of the apocalypse. Uh, he presented it so well, uh, you know, to simulate uh, the feeding of those who are feeding on the word of the living God. Uh, and what Peter was saying is uh, making them to understand uh, that do not give room to false teaching.
teaching or any kind of false influence in your life, which means you don't need you don't need any more negativity in your life. Uh, you don't need any more negativity in your life. Praise God. You don't need any more false falsehood in your life. You don't need any more false prophecies in your life. You don't need any more false relationships in your life. Are you listening to me? So what Peter does now is, you know, to reiterate Jesus back to them uh, so that uh, the saint can re regain their strength in God, so that they can regain their energy in God, so that they can regain their faith and their hope in God. In other words, I need to reiterate the epitome of what is possible. What is possible, praise God, to re-highlight the entire concept of the Bible, the death, the burial, and Christ's resurrection. In other words, if we, if we lose the potency of Christ's death, Christ's burial, and resurrection, then we lose everything, everything completely. Praise be the name of the Lord. Because every promises of God's word hinges on these principles. The death, the burial, and Christ's resurrection. Now we're together here. And now Peter was trying to now try to you know, get them into a moment, a place of recovery. Recovery. I have been recovery. I have been this way for so long. Now I need to have a directional change. I have been like this for so long. You know, you, know, you meet some people, they say, well, that is who I am. That is the way I am. Change! Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, I've been going this way for so long, there is no progress. Then change. Uh, I will together here. Now I need to change direction so that I can ensure the promise of God upon my life. I need to come out of my comfort zone because now I know who God is. I know who I am in God. Praise be the name of the Lord. So myself and God together, we can make this happen. Happen. I will together here. It is the knowledge of God that eliminates falsehood. The more of God you come to know, it begins to eliminate false city which you have built in your mind. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. If the you know, it is the knowledge of God that brings every threats under control. Mm. Thank you, Father God, because uh, as long as I live under the uh, un, under the, the, the positiveness of God, uh, it pushes away the negative. Uh, praise God. Uh, you must understand uh, the negative is what incapacitates you, uh, is what depletes you from making any progress uh, because of the negativity in your mind. Uh, you can't grow, ladies and gentlemen, uh, above your mind. Uh, are we together now? <laughs> if your mind is bound, you are imprisoned. Praise be the name of the Lord. You must understand it is a force and the negative that uses you contrary to whom God have designed you to be. Uh, the negative, the negative. Praise God. There are some prophets today. All they need to do is to give you a prophecy. You're going to be going and coming back. Going and coming back. Going and coming back but never established. Praise be the name of the almighty God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, that you then now uh, that uses uh, the, 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 this false this falsehood. Uh, you know, it uses all kinds of contrary forms uh, to be able to control you and keep you where you need to be. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, but you must understand uh, that God created you a free moral agent. Uh, are we together now? <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, and what they have done uh, is to oppose you. Uh, they, they use you opposite uh, to how God have ordained you to be used. Uh, are we together here. Uh, in other words, I was not ordained to be used negatively. I was not ordained to be limited. Praise God. I was not ordained to be, you know, looked down upon. I was not ordained, you know, uh, to be abused. Praise God. I have come across some people in the church uh, where you talk to them anyhow, they love it. When you abuse them, they like it. Because their mind have gone into that pattern to accept abuse. But that's what they got, that, 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 that's what they know. And when you treat them with love, they look at you like, what do you want from me? They look at you with a question mark. Why is he showing me love? What is he trying to do? You know, and all of that. All of that. Because their mind pattern is that you got to be abused. The devil is a liar. Oh, Shanda. I was not ordained to be, to be, to be treated anyhow. 
That's why the new light in the knowledge of God's word is to shine light by the gospels, praise God, you know, to be able to reveal who you are and whose you are. Knowing who you are in God. So what God had to do is to bring me to his preview, to, to, to his pure view. He shows me what I already am, where I am right now. And what he expects me to become, praise God. That is what the gospel does. He alights where I am, he doesn't judge me. And then he now shows me where I need to be. When he deals with me based on where I am, he shows me that, you know, he shows me that he's your product of your yesterday. In other words, where I am now is a product of my yesterday, praise God. Now, when he deals with my, where he wants me to, be, to become, when he deals with where he, want, he wants me to be, praise God, that, then he said that, that is going to be the product of your today. In other words, it doesn't matter where I am now, I'm not going to be there tomorrow, praise God. It doesn't matter how low I am now, I'm not going to be that low tomorrow, praise God. Because everything about God is He's taking me for, with, by precept and precept, uh, grace into grace, uh, glory into glory, power into power. Praise be the name of the Lord. Uh, that's why you don't look at yourself based on today and then look down on yourself. Uh, are we together now? Uh, we know we are not moved by what we see, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are moved by the living God that is in, on our inside. Uh, praise be the name of the Almighty God. Uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Father God. Uh, why is this important? Uh, because today, I'm changing direction. Hallelujah. I'm changing direction. I'm moving out of other people's opinion, other people's false predictions. I'm not moving into the positive of my life, into the positive of God, into the positivity which God has set for me. Thank you, Father God. As I close, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you begin to view yourself from self-deception, when you begin to view yourself from negative influence over your life, uh, you will never be able to walk in your tomorrow. You will not be able. You will not be able to walk in your future. You will not be able uh, to see your tomorrow because uh, what you can't see, you cannot become. Uh, praise be the name of the Almighty God. Uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, help me tell your neighbor change your direction uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, you got to change your direction. Uh, praise be the name of the Lord. Uh, as I close, uh, what comes to mind is the prodigal son. Uh, are we together now? The Bible says that he came to his father and the second boy and said, Daddy, can I have my portion? And God said, well, and his father said, well, please must understand that the father is a typology of Christ. Praise God. And he came and said, can I have my, my portion? And the father said, well, that's fine. Without, without argument, here are your portions. And the boy took, it, took what, what, what belongs to him. The Bible then said, he now moved out of the house as a rich boy. As he left home, ladies and gentlemen, Bible says he went into a far country. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. He went into a far country with everything which he has gotten, you know, uh, from his father. Now he squandered everything that he had. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. After he squandered everything, the Bible says he was now in want. In other words, he is now in, he's now dealing with lack. Uh, and then he was in the me, he was in a country where he has now uh, you know taking citizenship. Praise God. I've come to let you understand. Allow no challenge. Allow no trouble to make you change your citizenship from God to the world. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. And the Bible then said, Now he now said to them, Well, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, man. Can I have some food? And this was food meant for swine. And the boy said, I don't mind, I'd like to eat from the swine. And they said, No, you can't. They stopped him. Why? They deprived him because they valued the swine more than this boy. Praise God. Anytime you see, anytime you see value outside yourself to other people, they will abuse you. Praise be the name of the Almighty God. These are the lies of the enemies. And the Bible then said, the boy, the boy sat and said to himself, what is all this? You know, he now had to have a directional change. I will together here. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. And then he sat to himself and said, well, he came to himself, the Bible says. He came to himself. Child of God, nobody lay hands on him. He came to himself. They didn't have to 
bring any kind of anointing oil uh, from the land of Israel uh, to anoint him, but he came to himself. Uh, child of God, nobody have to pray for him. He came to himself. Nobody have to declare fast and prayer on his behalf, but he came to himself. I've come to let you understand uh, there's no problem with you. If you can come to yourself, you will kill that challenge. If you can come to yourself, you will destroy that urge. If you can come to yourself, ladies and gentlemen, you will walk in your victory in the name of Jesus. He came to himself. Praise be the name of the Lord. He had a directional change. He came to himself. He came to himself and he changed the course of his history. He changed all of a sudden. He said, you know what? I'm going back home. Praise God. He came back to God. Are you listening to me? Because your answers is always in God. Uh, your, your victory is always in God. Your power is always in God. Your success is always in God. What you seek is always in God. Praise be the name of the Lord. He came home. Praise God. And you see sometimes because you have left God for too long you think that he's not going to be able to accept me. Lies. I want you to get that here. That is the very, very reason why Jesus had to lay himself down. To bring you and bring you to restoration. Yes. To restore you. The false teaching will say you can't be restored. Lies. Christ died to restore me. That's what makes me qualified. I don't care how terrible the errors are. I don't care how bad the mistakes are. Listen. Your mistakes qualifies you to God. Your errors qualifies you to God. If I see somebody right now who have not made mistakes, I'm not going to keep you around, my friend. I won't. You have not made any mistakes? Oh, so please, stay away from me. That's what Peter said to Jesus. He said, stay away from me. If I'm a sinful man. Whatever that issue is, bring it to God. Bring it to God. Bring it to God. Bible says he came home. His father saw him from distance. Put that royal apparel on him. Put a ring on his finger. And he celebrated him. Oh, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. I've come to let you understand. Your safety. Thank you. Your victory. Your power. Your, your future, your destiny, everything is resting on the knowledge of God. To know who you are, look at Christ. Don't look at anybody, look at Jesus. To know who you are, look at Christ. Look at Christ. Oftentimes, we're always seeking for the answers outside where the answers are. Look for Christ. Your answers is in Christ and is in the word. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit.